Well, this city, Genoa, has always been about people and goods moving in and out of its port. Today, around one in 12 Genoese are actually from a different country around the world. To pick up on that theme of migration, I'm here with another MEP from this region. Hello there, Brando Benifei. Nice to meet you. Brando nice to meet you too. Yeah. For our viewers, Brando is with the Partito Democratico, which was uh, in government until March 2018, and is with the Socialists and Democrats group in the European Parliament. Well, let's take a walk along the port. Yes. Uh, in terms of those new migration laws we've just been hearing about in our report, and Matteo Salvini said in 2018, these laws mean more rights for real refugees and less waste on those who aren't. What do you think of that point of view? I, I have to be very blunt. In my opinion, the laws that have been approved, they are in fact to create more chaos, to resolve less problems and to have more people on the streets. We have. Uh, uh, minors and women on the streets now that are left out of the integration uh, systems. Why would the government uh, be choosing to do that though? Because I think that who would vote for the populist and the nationalist if things are solved? This has proved very popular with the public who feel that they're submerged with migrants. Yeah. Uh, do you agree with supporters of these policies that enough hasn't been done in the past. If we look at the data, there has been more dead people in, this, in the sea, uh, not uh, uh, more integration, and we have more undocumented migrants. These policies are not uh, uh, targeting the real issues, that is to have good integration and also to have a managed, at European level, uh, migration policy. Is that an argument that your party is putting forward and can it win that argument? If we just uh, uh, follow a nationalistic stance that we do on our own, Italy will be left with the migrants arriving from, from Africa and not be helped by any others and not for sure by Orban, the best friend of Salvini. Another huge topic for Genoa and for Italy in 2018 was that disastrous bridge collapse here in this city. Uh, we've been talking about it earlier in our programme. Now, an MEP from the Five Star Movement told us that Italian authorities have been neglecting infrastructure for many, many years, including under your party's time in government, of course. Who is to blame? To be honest, if we look uh, at the last decades, many political forces have been in government and unfortunately we see that when uh, Salvini was in government with Berlusconi at the time, uh, they uh, extended without uh, real warrants on the investments uh, the uh, management of the uh, present society for uh, the uh, highway. Obviously I think all the political class has some degree of responsibility anyway. Just looking at the European perspective, uh, Italy has had an extremely rough ride over the last decade with the Eurozone crisis. Uh, it's currently seen as having a very fragile, if recovering, economy. Uh, do you believe that this clash we've been seeing with Europe uh, can be resolved? Italy, for its position in the Mediterranean, for uh, its uh, connections with the rest of the world, it has its place at the heart of the European Union. And so we need a more efficient European Union that is able to take decisions. Today, as a, as a member of parliament, sometimes I'm frustrated by the inability of the governments to really find a good compromise that let European agenda go forward. Well, I'd like to continue that look to the future. Our team's been interested in how uh, young Italians see their future. And I know you're the co-chair of the European Parliament's cross-party group on youth. Well, to continue that theme of young people, we've come here to the International Linguistic High School de Leda in Genoa. Brando Benifei is inside this classroom right now speaking to some of the students. Take a look. <laughs> a livello universitario ovviamente se io eh, ho fatto, ho fatto l'Erasmus classico con l'Accademico a Londra, eh, sono dentro eh, questo eh, diciamo well, Brando has finished speaking to his students. Some of them have kindly stayed behind to have a word with us as well. We're joined by Bia, Giorgio and Natalie. Thanks for staying. Thank you. I just wanted to ask you, uh, looking from the outside, it feels like there are lots of changes in Italy right now. Does that feel the same way to you? And what changes do you want to see? The problem now in Europe is that mo more and more countries are thinking of the idea of leaving the European Union, uh, the most Famous example, obviously, is uh, Britain, uh, which has already done it. And maybe we fear that in Italy as well, this choice uh, might be made. Has Brexit given you a different 
impression of the European Union, different thoughts about Europe? Before Brexit, I was thinking of actually going to the UK to study, but I had to change my mind, and that made me um, think about the idea of Europe uh, in general as well, because for the first time I realized that it's not as permanent as I thought it was. You're all 18. Yeah. Are you yes. going to be voting in the European elections? Yes. 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 And uh, well, in that case, what do you want from Europe? What I would really like by my vote to, uh, to do concretely is, in a way, helping contrasting um, the, the movements of uh, extreme right which are uh, spreading in this moment in Europe. For example, as far as the immigration issue is concerned, um, if we don't really focus on how developing it in a pacific way, uh, it just doesn't work. Yeah, there should be more communication between countries. Uh, it's right now. I think it's more as perceived as a, a fight between countries who's doing more about migration, who's not doing anything. Obviously, I also uh, want uh, my political ideas to be represented in Parliament. But in this area, I don't think that is the most important thing about uh, our representatives. Uh, of course, they have to sh share some human decency, <laughs> but uh, apart from that, they, they really can be from whatever party as long as they are um, passionate about their job and clever people, clever informed people. <laughs> so are you optimistic about the future for Europe? If we young people aren't optimistic, I don't think anybody else can be it, so. Uh, to say, well, I can't change things, everything is gonna be like that, that's not the point. The point is that we can do something even though uh, the political moments, the political ideas are not ours. While we think, for example, at our founding father, uh, Altiero Spinelli, who, whose name is big in the entrance of the European Parliament, he uh, was optimistic in some way when he was confined in the island of Ventotene during the Second World War, and he was their age. So I think it's very important to try not to surrender to what they see and to uh, believe in what uh, someone uh, thinks is important and to try to change things. Well, thank you all very much for speaking to us. Enjoy your first voting experience in May. Thank you for watching the programme. We'll see you soon on France 24 for more European news.